All right, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, we're gonna be talking about multiple days of upcoming severe weather. Basically, a tornado outbreak is fairly likely over the next three days. I'm talking Monday, March 21st through Wednesday. That's gonna be March 23rd. Uh, we're gonna be talking about all three of these days and then even the pattern beyond those things. Anyways, before I get into things, be sure to smash that like button, leave a comment down below, and subscribe for more weather-related content. For today's comment of the day, I want to know which day out of these three upcoming severe weather days do you think is going to be the worst out of the three? I have an idea of which one I think, but I'm curious what you guys will think. Uh, so let me know in the comments down below, and I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. I also wanted to let you guys know that I will be going live today. I have decided that I will go live today. It's going to be some point this afternoon or evening. I want to preserve myself, so I want to wait until things are getting kind of bad uh, before I start going live. So that could be any time between 1 or even like 5 p.m. Somewhere in there, it will send you a notification. If you go to the live stream uh, and turn notifications on, it'll let you know when uh, I go live, so it could be at any time, so I'd recommend doing that. I'm going to leave the link in the description, the top of the description, and in the top of my pinned comment down below. Also, be sure to like that stream beforehand, because that's just going to help us get off to a great start. Thank you guys for that. Let's get straight into the radar imagery here. As we can see, there's a couple areas of storminess. We see over the northwest, we do have some storminess in the area. We do see that there was some storminess over New England. That has gone ahead and basically moved out overnight. Uh, and then we have this large area over uh, kind of the central United States into the southern Rockies, and then we have this pocket of storms heading in through Texas. That is what's going to eventually be our severe weather. So we need to talk about all these individual areas and, and features here. Uh, we can see the precipitation typing does turn off eventually here, which is very, very annoying. Uh, we see that there is a lot of storminess heading on shore to the Pacific Northwest. Some snowfall happening in here in the Cascades. You can also see these mountain ranges in here seeing some snowfall, even as we approach closer to the Rockies in here, that's more in the form of snowfall. Then outside of these circles, it's mostly rainfall, so we see kind of layered areas of snowfall, rainfall, snowfall, rainfall going on. Super interesting pattern we find ourselves in for this region, uh, although it's probably not interesting to you guys because most of the time it is raining or something like that, so I'm sure it's very, very uh, repetitive for you guys, unfortunately. We can see there is just some pockets of rain and snow showers around for this entire region. Uh, it depends where you're at, but there is just these smaller pockets of this happening. Uh, rain and snowfall, which is really interesting as well. Our low is probably somewhere in here. Um, and that low is going to move down into this region. But what's going to happen is it's going to have a cold front underneath that's going to swing through and eventually uh, come into these regions. But right now what we see happening is very warm air and humid air surging into Texas. And we can actually see this, I mean see it, because we see these showers associated with that very warm and humid air moving into the area. So we see very sufficient uh, temperatures, humidity moving into these areas where we're gonna be seeing a lot of severe weather. Basically this entire circle here uh, is the area we're most worried about. So San Antonio, uh, Dallas, uh, Shreveport, I think it's Shrave, Shreveport, Shreveport, something like that. Houston, I think Austin is somewhere in here. Uh, so we we have a lot of larger areas in this region. We're getting most of the bigger Texas towns and cities uh, in this circle, so we are a bit concerned. Um, we're going to be watching this event very closely. We will be going over the Storm Prediction Center at the later portion of this video, so stay tuned for that. Uh, we can see very sufficient conditions moving in, though, is my point. I want to turn off the radar, actually, for a moment here. Um, we're going to try to get the cape on screen and see if we can get a, a visualization of what conditions are looking like as far as cape is concerned right now. Yeah, so this is, let's see, overnight. So cape is our temperatures and humidity kind of combined uh, to figure out how likely thunderstorms are and severe weather, how sufficient the conditions are. So the more of these colors we see move in, the more sufficient things are is all you need to know. The more of that warm tropical air has moved in from the Gulf. So you see we've made this move. This is 2 a.m. and this is about 7 or 8 a.m. We already see it moving into this region. What we're gonna see happen is all of this down here, all these greens and oranges and red, is gonna just move its way up into Texas uh, over throughout the day today. And then that's when we're gonna see a cold front approaching this region and that's when bad things are gonna happen. 
Uh, when this cape moves in, the warm and humid air moves in, and then a cold front comes swinging underneath and interacting with that warm, humid air, that is why we have such a high risk of severe weather today. And we're going to see similar things happening over here uh, throughout the day tomorrow. So we have multiple days of interesting uh, and very dangerous severe weather coming up that we need to pay very close attention to. Um, and I highly recommend throughout this entire event, obviously, paying attention, paying attention to the National Weather Service and the Storm Prediction Center uh, and just your local warnings and watches and advisories, of course, uh, is the biggest thing. But also the Storm Prediction Center outlooks as well is going to be very, very crucial to pay attention to. Now, what we're going to do here is we're going to move on. We're going to go ahead and talk about the model guidance and then the Storm Prediction Center in just a moment. Now, we're actually not taking a look at our European model here. We're actually taking a look at our NAM 3K model because this model is going to give us a much better representation of that severe weather risk. Let's switch over real quickly to our surface cape. So we can see that move in like I mentioned. Look at that. It just shoves its way in and really builds in. Okay, so this is, let me get to about now. This is probably about now, something like this. And we can see that the cape, like we saw on our radar just now, has moved into this region. We see 500, 600, 700. That is sufficient for thunderstorm activity, so I wouldn't be surprised if things start to get going here. Uh, but really, it's these 1,000 plus amounts that we're going to be watching for. That's when you start to see really high potential for uh, some severe weather. And we can see by the time we're reaching about 2 or 3 p.m. here, Again, Monday, March 21st, today, from the time of making this video, we see 1,000 plus amounts stretching uh, throughout all of these regions in Texas. It hasn't reached this area yet. Uh, we're going to see that happen a little bit later. Uh, so here's by the time we're reaching about 6, 7 p.m., so we're reaching the evening. We can see things really picking up for this region. Uh, we can see reds showing up, which is indicating 2,000 to even 3,000 plus amounts of cape in here in the red. So very high amounts. This is why we have an enhanced risk and maybe we'll even upgrade to a moderate risk. We'll have to watch and see if that ends up happening uh, because it's just so sufficient for severe weather. Uh, we combine this with some other parameters as well, uh, like high shear here. These pinks are indicating like through the roof amounts of shear around that cold front. Uh, so with that comes uh, very high significant tornado parameter values here, which is, it's kind of a newer thing. It's a little bit more experimental. So we want to take it with a grain of salt, but it is supposed to indicate just how high uh, of a probability we have of tornadoes and just how strong those tornadoes can get uh, based on the conditions present according to this model. Uh, and those pinks in there are very high amounts. So this could be a big tornado day. We already knew that, but this is just re reinforcing that. Uh, that idea. So let's watch the um, precipitation type move through. So this is by the time we're reaching about 10 a.m. or so. Uh, this is by the time we're reaching about 1 or 2 p.m. here. So we can see this pocket of thunderstorms moves through up into Oklahoma and Texas, this uh, original area. And then we see things kind of showery down here, our main severe weather region. Uh, this is really going to dictate how bad today will be. How many of these showers and thunderstorms are around before our main severe weather event is really going to impact how sufficient those conditions are. The more sunny, hot, and humid conditions we get with no thunderstorms, the more severe weather is going to thrive later today. Because what we end up seeing happen uh, is we get much worse thunderstorms developing um, a little bit later on into the evening. Uh, these ones in here. These are going to be more of your supercell type storms taking place in here. Uh, and we're really watching for these. Um, there could be some severe weather impacts with these ones as well, but I really think it's these after ones that we're really going to have to be watching uh, throughout the the evening and even throughout the overnight hours. We're going to be seeing these take place, uh, and then they will eventually move through by the time reaching about mid-morning tomorrow morning. So obviously, I'm not going to be able to go live throughout all of that, but we will try to go live as, as long as possible. That's why I'm going to try to start as late as possible. Now, let's switch to our European model here. We're going to just go through the overall pattern. This is the storm that's causing it all. We see a low pressure system here, cold front underneath, a bit of a warm front there. Uh, we see this extend eastward, and this is by the time we're reaching tomorrow. This is when the severe weather is going to be the worst in here. Low pressure centers here. This is a cold front, by the way. We see a bit of a warm front up there. Um, and then we see this move through to the eastern seaboard for Wednesday, and this is when some bad thunderstorms and severe weather can be taking place in the southeast. We have a 995 millibar low pressure center, so this is a quite strong low pressure center, actually. Uh, and let's just keep moving this on. We get into a bit of a quieter pattern, actually, uh, after this is all said and done, until at least around April 1st is when maybe we can see things picking back up. 
uh, once we start April. So this storm is going to give way to a much quieter pattern. We see very cold air pour into the eastern United States as we approach the very end of March, by the way. Uh, the temperature pattern is looking about like this. Sometimes the models overdo this type of a pattern, but we'll have to wait and see. This is Sunday, March 27th around, uh, and then we get into a warmer pattern there towards the very, very end of March into the beginning of April. This would be around the 30th, 31st time frame here of March in about 10 days from now. So let's move on from this and talk about the Storm Prediction Center now. Here's the day one categorical outlook, and we can see there's a large general thunderstorm risk in here, which is where we expect general thunderstorms. But there could be severe weather. It's just not expected at this point, so you're going to want to pay attention regardless. Uh, our marginal risk is that darker green area. That's where severe weather begins to become a little bit more likely. Um, we do think that it is very possible in this region, uh, but it's not the most likely out of all of the regions. Still, pay attention to your local warnings, watches, and advisories because you're very close to those very sufficient conditions for tornadoes and severe weather. And anomalies do happen, uh, and it could actually stretch into your region, of course. Now, the slight risk region, yellow, is where we expect things to become a bit more likely. That encompasses uh, mostly just Texas, but a bit of southern Oklahoma a bit of western Louisiana, and a bit of southern Arkansas there. And then we have our enhanced area, the orange area there, and that's where things ex are expected to be a bit more widespread throughout Texas. Um, that is where it is becoming more likely than not that you see some, storm, some form of very strong storms or severe weather in there, and that's where supercells are also looking very, very possible, and that does extend a bit into Louisiana as well. Let's take a look at your individual outlooks, uh, but first I want to mention this could get upgraded to a moderate risk today. I, I genuinely believe that there is room for a moderate risk in there. Uh, so be paying attention to that as well because that would greatly increase the odds of severe weather if the Storm Prediction Center thinks that it is, you know, if it warrants a moderate risk, that means that things are looking really, really bad. So please pay attention to that. Here's the day one wind outlook. We have a 5% chance within 25 miles of a given location there within the green, 15% chance within 25 miles of a given location there within the yellow, and then a 30% chance there within the red. Our hail outlook is almost exactly the same, except we have this hatched region there on the western end, and that indicates two-inch diameter or larger hail is going to be possible throughout that black hatched region, so you're going to want to watch that very, very closely. And then our tornado risk here, we have a 2% chance within 25 miles of a given location there within the green, 5% chance there within the brown, 10% chance there within the yellow, and we even have that significant hatched region, which indicates that um, EF2 or larger tornadoes are going to be fairly possible uh, throughout the day today. So we're going to want to watch that very, very closely, obviously. Now, day two categorical outlook, things are looking even worse. We do have multiple general thunderstorm risks here, one out west, one for southern Florida, one here for a bit of the southeast in Ohio Valley. We have two marginal risks there, one for Missouri and then one here for the deep south. And then we have the slight risk here in the deep south, which again is where severe weather becomes a little bit more likely. Enhanced is where things become a bit widespread. And then moderate is where the red there in between Louisiana and Mississippi is where we basically expect uh, widespread severe weather to take place there uh, in that moderate risk. We also have the individual outlooks here for this one as well. So let's take a look. Uh, day two wind outlook here. We have a 5% chance within 25 miles of a given location there within the two green regions a 15% chance there within the yellow, and then a 30% chance there within the red. Hail outlook here is about the same, except some of these areas shrink, but percentages are the same for each color. So we're going to move straight to the tornado outlook here, where we have an even higher risk of tornadoes on day two, unfortunately. We have a 2% chance within 25 miles of a given location there within the green regions, 5% chance there within the brown, 10% chance there within the yellow, and a 15% chance there within the red of tornadoes, which unfortunately is a very high chance of tornadoes. Uh, you don't see 15% chances of tornadoes every single day. That is a very rare event, actually, uh, to see it that high, unfortunately. Um, so we're going to have to really, really pay attention to this. And I will be trying to go live tomorrow as well, like I mentioned, on Tuesday. We'll take a much deeper look into that on tomorrow's upload, so stay tuned for that also. We also have the hatched rich risk here for the entire yellow and red regions here, which again indicates EF2 or higher tornadoes will be uh, fairly possible, unfortunately. And then day three, as of now, we just have a general thunderstorm risk, marginal risk, and then in our yellow there, another slight risk. Although I think there is a chance that we do get an upgrade here to enhanced risk somewhere on this day because that is a very large slight risk. And this storm has just proven to be very sufficient for severe weather um, overall. So we're going to have to watch really closely what they do with the day three outlook here. But it seems like the southeast and mid-Atlantic is going to be the most impacted. Anyway, for today's confidence tab, we're at a four out of six. 
uh, for today's comment of the day, I asked you guys, when do you think our next severe weather outbreak will be? And JT Weather said, I feel our next severe weather outbreak will be during the first week of April after a brief quiet period. And that's definitely uh, what I just said in the video, obviously. So I definitely agree there uh, with JT Weather. So good comment of the day there. For today's patron, highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our Platinum patrons, Bill Krejci, James Wade, Dovin Nagel, Little the Pan, Mandy Birchfield, Patrick Strickland, Dave Scott, and Donna Carnes as well. I would also like to thank our Diamond patrons, Bill Roberts, Marcus Connolly, Noah Harlow, Michael Cotto, Lassa Capite, Charles Dennett, Bill Dallas, Garys, and John Calisi also. I would also like to thank our channel members, Capite, Stephen Fan, and Jeremy Cox as well. Anyway guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to smash that like button, leave a comment down below, and subscribe for more weather-related content. I'll see you guys in the next video.